questions of everything is, uh, I, be, we have to be very careful. Uh, this woman has been in prison or at least um, under Russian, Russian uh, control for so long that we have to understand that this is not a human being that is operating under normal psychological uh, conditions. And she's a heroine, no doubt about it. Uh, however, she's in Ukraine surrounded by political monsters. That's, so I, I, I call for caution. I, think, I just think that one of the best things that the international community, in particular diaspora, could do is get her out of here. I'm, I'm sure that you saw that she was rolling her eyes constantly and that she looked up at the ceiling and it almost looked as though she was going to lose her balance or something. And this is why the president is, is speaking. So that's why like, I really think that for her safety and also for the safety of, of Ukraine, uh, we need to take care of her and not let her jump right into politics, which is also very... I mean, let's not forget that she belongs to um, Yulia Tymoshenko. And Tymoshenko is not on the, the war path, per se, as far as relationships go with Fyotash and Putin. So on a grander scale, um, we have to really take care of this, this heroine, admire her and protect her before um, any polit political technologies are going to be um, used against her. That's my opinion. To an extent, everybody wants to hear her story. However, at this point, she's just been let out. She needs a comfortable, safe uh, environment and she needs psychological professionals that are, are trained with post-traumatic stress disorder and uh, traumatic uh, environmental uh, disorder because she has been in this situation. However, we shouldn't only just see her as, as this innocent lamb because this innocent lamb in the world of modern politics, particularly when Putin is involved, can be abused as an, instru as an instrument to create more harm than good. And, uh, of course, there's a lot of joy, a lot of, uh, of, of pleasure with this. However, there's also a, a great um, amount of cynicism that I feel within my um, social networks uh, regarding the other uh, prisoners. And there are hundreds of them. And the cynicism also revolves around the fact that Viktor Medvedchuk, who is, at the very least, a very dubious uh, character... Um, is in charge of, of negotiating the fates of Ukrainian uh, prisoners and, and heroes that are still missing in action, even. So it's, it's, it, there's a war going on, and this is just one tiny step. I don't think that she would be fighting in the army. She'd probably be given a, a, some sort of a, a higher position. Politics, I mean, the only reason that she became a political figure in the first place was because she was um, imprisoned by by the Russians. That's not really, in my opinion, that's not really um, somebody who is worthy of participating in, in parliamentary debates. Uh, a political, she, she should definitely be a public figure, and she is clearly a patriotic figure for Ukraine. However, um, we should we should respect her and let her decide what, what she wants to be. And I'm really afraid that this current situation is going to push her um, into messaging and, and travel that she would probably maybe not otherwise choose to, to be doing. Now, actually, her PR value is so huge that I encourage, and this is what I'm going to be doing, is while the whole world is, is looking, or, or at least the part of the world that is interested in developments between the Russian Federation and Ukraine, it could be a diversionary uh, act as well. As we know, in the last um, couple of days, we've lost more soldiers than we have in the recent past. Major ceasefire violations. Um, again, the Russians have brought in much more military equipment to the border. Uh, these rumors of elections that are going to be taking place. We need to be paying attention to Nadia, of course, but um, also understand that this could be a sort of decoy or um, for, for other things that are happening on, on the ground right now.